Y en las películas de Bollywood no se besan los, los, el chico y la chica. Pues y cuando, cuando ellos se acercaban y decían se, para besarse y todos estaban así, y cuando no besaban, ¡oh! Y es como aquí cuando he visto la pasión, la gente de fútbol, que cuando no hace gol y toda la gente se saltan, pues nosotros así saltamos cuando el chico y chica no se besaban. ¡Oh! Mi hermano estaba muerto, mi padre estaba enfermo, mis hermanas eran pequeñas, mi madre que no había trabajado nunca. Que en este momento he pensado, vale, si las mujeres no pueden trabajar, solamente los hombres pueden, pues un día voy a vestirme de chico, a buscar un trozo de pan a mi familia, Yo vivía con mucho miedo, pero vivía. Aprendí todas sus normas de los talibanes, sabiendo qué quieren. Yo viví todo el régimen de talibanes. Dentro de talibanes había gente que también eran buenas, que eran paz. Pero también había gente que tenían solamente, eran psicópatas y querían matar para acabar con esta vida. Y esto es porque son personas Órfanos que han quedado después de guerra civil en mi país, que han visto sus padres muriendo delante de ellos, sus seres reanimados, todos están muriendo delante de ellos, y ellos han crecido de decir la vida que terminó. What? Are you going in to see it? No. Why not? I uh, come here to, uh, to uh, do football. Un día anunciaron que van a hacer una ejecución. Esto va a ser en la en el estadio de fútbol y apañamos meter una cámara pequeña para grabar y pudimos. Uh, meterla. Ha sido muy grave. Si nos pillan, es muy grave, ¿sabes? Pero al final lo hicimos y grabamos la, la imagen. Ha habido casi 30.000 personas mirando lo que está pasando. Ha sido chocante para mí. Al final le pregunto a uno de los talibanes, los talibanes, oye, la gente va eliminando la sentencia de muerte en casi todo el mundo. ¿Vosotros por qué esta insistencia en la pena de muerte? Me dijo, es que esto viene en un texto del Corán. O sea que la ley de ojo por ojo, diente por diente, ¿no? Segunda razón es la tradición afgana. El afgano tiene que tomar re revancha. Cuando nos decían, ahora vais allí y ver aceptábamos que ahora vamos a ver esta persona cómo muere o esta mujer cómo muere, por el, segundo, el siguiente soy yo. Y así, con este miedo, con este dolor, íbamos y sentábamos y mirábamos ese dolor pensando que esto va a pasar mañana. A medida que iba creciendo, venían muchos problemas, como yo físicamente cambiaba como mujer por siguiendo siendo hombre, ¿no? Al principio iba una navaja en mis bolsillos, pensaba que si los talibanes me cogen, 
eh, ellos me van a, a lapidar. Pero antes de lapidarme, yo tengo que hacer algo para terminar con mi vida. Pues pensaba que esta navaja funciona, porque claro, con que había visto muchas películas en estos cines de clandestinos, mmm, era pequeña, pensaba que esta navaja tan pequeña me puede matar. Pero ahora que pienso que no había iba saliendo, estaba solamente, era pequeña y pensaba que esto va a funcionar. افتخار است که ما ایرا کسی ما رو میان گذار بگه و یا اینکه بگم طالبان مردم رو به مسجد کش میکنه و یا ریش مردم رو نگاه میداره یک قانون اسلام است ما به خاطر یک قانون به افغانستان بلا شده نو که خلق پزور مسجد تلی رو و که شدید بازار بنده و که نور نروا بنده و در اگر دی اسلامی اصول دی و اسلامی قوانین دی در مرگوه رو به دی که چو که صفی دی رزی بودی که نمولی در مرگوه In 1996, Osama bin Laden had to look for a new shelter. Sudan, where he lived, could no longer host them as the Americans accused him of terrorism. So bin Laden returned to Afghanistan, where he had fought in the 1980s. He found a new host in the Taliban. In Afghanistan, they received the Taliban as a whisper. Huesped quiere decir más o menos estatus de refugiado político sin derecho. Pero Bin Laden ignoró el estatus de huésped y empezó eh, a entrenar a su gente, a entrenar eh, voluntarios que venían de casi todo el mundo islámico. Y luego ya eh, lo, los talibanes estaban muy, eh, digamos, muy enfadados con él. Pero no han podido hacer nada por su historia en Afganistán y lo respetaban por esto. Bin Laden and the Taliban found a common enemy, Commander Massoud, who resisted in the Panjshir Valley, north of Kabul. Aujourd'hui, les Talibans menacent l'entrée de la vallée. Ne reste avec Massoud que ses derniers fidèles. La plupart de ses compagnons ont disparu, d'autres l'ont abandonné, certains trahis. After the massacres of the civil war, Massoud saw the fight against the Taliban and Bin Laden as his redemption. Sensing that Bin Laden was a global danger, he went for the first time to Europe, hoping to win the support of Western leaders. When he was in France, he was giving a message to America that Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda will be a real threat to all of you. My message to President Bush is the following. If he isn't interested in peace in Afghanistan, if he doesn't help the Afghan people to arrive at their objective of peace, then the Americans and the rest of the world will have to face the problems. This is a bomb of the relojería, and one day it explodes. Since March, we heard a rumor that Osama bin Laden will dirige a big blow against the Americans y va a haber muchas víctimas americanas. The world did not listen to Massoud's warning. He came back to Afghanistan empty-handed. By September 2001, Bin Laden was ready to attack America. Early that same month, two men were sent to Panjshir, deposed as journalists and asked to interview Commander Massoud. Two boys came. Two terrorists, I can say, from Al Qaeda. They were not journalists. They were pretending to be journalists. They came with their camera, but the people were saying they were very much taking care of their camera, not giving to anyone. They were called for the interview. Me and Commander Massoud went to that room. I was just beside him. Around 15 questions, 
I think nine or ten, eight or nine were about Osama bin Laden. Why in France you talked against Osama bin Laden? Why you don't believe in him? The minute commander was here, the minute I wanted to whisper, what is the situation in Persian? Boom. He died. He was killed in my lap. Ce n'est pas encore officiel, mais tout porte à croire ce soir que le commandant Massoud est mort. Plusieurs sources confirment son décès. I opened my eyes. My wife was there. Where are we? You are in Germany. I said, come closer. Your husband is dying. If I have ever shouted at you loudly, I'm sorry. Then I called my son, come, come. I, at that moment, repeated the poetry of my father to him. I said, son, be objective. If you have wore the uniform of my country against terrorists, go. Because mercy to the wolf is cruelty to the lamb. But I survived. And after two days, New York. The cockpit's not answering. Somebody's stabbed in business class. I don't know. I think we're getting hijacked. Another one just hit the building. Wow. Wow, another one hit it hard. Another one just hit the building. Holy smokes. On September the 11th, enemies of freedom committed an act of war against our country. The evidence we have gathered all points to a collection of loosely affiliated terrorist organizations known as Al-Qaeda. There are thousands of these terrorists in more than 60 countries. They are recruited from their own nations and brought to camps in places like Afghanistan where they are trained in the tactics of terror. If you look at the people who were in the plane who committed suicide and killed more than 3,000 people in New York, none of them were Afghan. None of them were Afghan. All of them been in Afghanistan. And why that has happened? Because Afghanistan was forgotten. And if again Afghanistan is forgotten and isolated, no guarantee that it will not happen. It can happen in the future as well. The 
rise of Islamic fundamentalism in Afghanistan began in the late 60s, as the elite in Kabul embraced a Western way of life, and the youth dreamed of a socialist revolution. But many Afghans were uncomfortable with these changes. The violent communist takeover in 1978 and the repression of Islam further widened the gap. The Mujahideen, the holy warriors, stood up against the communist government. In Afghanistan, the faithful Mujahideen are fighting to establish a pure Islamic government. What started as an insurgency became a war. Once the Soviet army entered Afghanistan to support the communist regime. The courage of the Mujahideen turned them into a legend. I remember when I became a teenager, one of my dream was that we will go and we will distribute water to the freedom fighters. The Mujahideen received international support from the USA as well as from the Muslim world. In the 1980s, Osama bin Laden came to Afghanistan to join the war against the godless Soviets. Politics is always dirty. And the countries who are involved, they choose the most conservative group of people and train them and made them monsters just to get rid of the USSR. In 1989, after 10 years of combat, the Soviet army withdrew from Afghanistan. One million people died in that war. Millions more became refugees. The Mujahideen had won. But instead of building peace, they fought among themselves for power. They destroyed much of Kabul and the rest of the country. The resistance fighters of the 80s became the warlords of the 90s. Yeah, they destroyed. Mujahideen destroyed the, the dream of the nation. In 1994, a new force emerged, the Taliban. A militia led by clerics and made of young men raised in refugee camps. With the support of Pakistan, they overcame the warlords. By 1996, the Taliban ruled over the country. People were suffered from civil war. Badly. When Taliban came, amazingly, they was been welcomed by Afghans. The new rulers brought peace but enforced a harsh interpretation of Islamic law. Alcohol and sports were forbidden. Movie theaters were closed. Women were segregated. Maramat kujas, pait chara malam shad, nakhunat chara malam shad, chadari chara kutas, chara dasta tazir chadari keshidi. Tega tamam zanai Afghanistan the 